Hi everyone, my name is Amandine Flax and welcome to a new episode of Entrepreneurs Playing Games. Today we are live with Janvier, the founder and CEO of Minutes. So as usual, we are live on many platforms. So over the next hour and a half or so, um, so we're together until about 12 and we're going to talk about Janvier's startups, his own journey, but also we're going to uh, answer your own questions. So if you have any questions, anytime, you can just pop into the chat, whatever the platform you're using, and we'll make sure to answer to you live. And also, as the name suggests, we are going to play some video games, so that will be quite fun. Um, so if you are watching from YouTube, please know that the uh, video will also be available on the channel at youtube.com slash amandinflax. So feel free to subscribe. Um, that would be a fantastic way of supporting the channel. We also live on Twitch. That means that um, you may have noticed we are affiliate on Twitch. That means that if you are an amazing prime user you can support the channel for free so you can support one creator per month for free so be sure to use it because that's a great opportunity to support content creators and that's perfect because today we are going to talk about content creators with minutes so be ready to ask questions about that um, I think my introduction is already too long and you're not here to hear from me or my blurb or the promotion of all the different channels about entrepreneurs playing games. So let's get started with Jean-Pierre. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank yeah? you Thank for having me. I'm super happy to have you here today. <coughs> um, we are going to deep dive into your own journey. So are you ready for that? I'm so ready. <laughs> Great. Well, first thing first, mm -hmm. can you tell me more about what Minute is, what your startup is about? Yeah, so, um, so Minute Shorts is um, it's an app that allows you to watch short films. Mm -hmm. And and we kind of went a bit further in terms of uh, we're not just allowing you to watch short films, we're, categor we're categorizing films based on the time a person will have. So when you go on an app, the sec when you go on an app on the homepage, you see we give a, sec a selection of 5, 10, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. So based on your choice, then we give you a film to watch. Okay. And this, the sort of user case we were saying that um, people were using our platform is when you're commuting to work. Mm -hmm. So on the tube, right? On the tube, yeah. For example, how long does it take to go to work? Um, it takes me about... 30 minutes but I walk yeah well so so I'm chilling <laughs> you're chilling so yeah, there are people uh, for example my girlfriend sometimes when she goes to work it takes about uh, 10 minutes mm -hmm. and then so on that time she'll watch she'll, she'll go on the app say 10 minutes and give you a list or, or give it a film to watch and then um, she can watch it offline she can download it to watch it once she's on, on the tube okay or you can stream it directly on the app and and there are also other user cases on your lunch time. Mm -hmm. uh, people like me, I, my lunch <laughs> my lunch hours are really, really <laughs> restricted. So uh, there'll be user cases when your lunch, you only got five minutes to kill. Yeah. And you don't want to spend time just on YouTube trying to find something or... It takes so much time to just find exactly, the right video. The right video. Watch. So we're kind of uh, cutting the whole browsing aspect of uh, trying to look for something. We're just saying, give us the time, mm -hmm. give a film to watch. And there's also 20 minutes where whatever time you have as well. So that's perfect. So when you when you <coughs> launch the app, you select the time you have ahead yeah. of you, right? Yeah. So you don't. It's not something that is preset. It's just you prompting it, saying, "Oh, yeah. I have ten minutes." Ahead yes, of me. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's really nice. I actually downloaded the app. I've tried it. Mm. It's on my previous phone that I got stolen, actually. Oh, so, oh, so I didn't God. retry it this week, yeah. but I really loved it. Yeah. Thank you. I, and I'm, I don't know much about you know films and and the space for cre content creators mm. apart from the YouTube and like streaming space. Yeah. Um. How does this work for creators to share their uh, short films outside of your app? Is there any like a uh, place where people use to publish their films or yeah, something um, else? Yeah. So we. Like the convention, we focus on short films, mm -hmm. short narrative film to be precise. Okay. Um, and what I mean by that is, so you have, anything can be short film, so even like your Instagram stories can be mm -hmm. short film. And you have, uh, I don't know, artsy, farty videos and stuff, and even advert can be short films. And we tend, the, the films we're focusing on, uh, the short film we're focusing on, these are narrative films like, uh, you see like, I don't know, the Oscar short films, mm -hmm. um, uh, the BAFTA short film, the BFI, those kind of short films that's the, that's the one we're focusing yeah. on and so in terms of the space where you can find these films unfortunately 
Uh, and the reason why we, we came up with the platform is because there was not a specific place for these. Okay. So you have uh, YouTube, but then YouTube is everything. YouTube is like you have wedding videos, and videos of cats and dogs, <laughs> all this other stuff. And, and but then short film doesn't really get that much uh, attention compared to all this other uh, content. Then you have Vimeo, but then Vimeo is Vimeo business. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not just for short films. So then, um, then when, so when we came up with the idea is when we came up with the idea because there was not a specific platform for short films, and then we also um, what also inspired us. We looked at the way um, Spotify uh, kind of um, influenced music. Mm-hmm. So before Spotify, there was YouTube. There was also other platform, but then even then. You, music is all over the place so you yes. kind of have to go look for them and know what you're looking for in order to find them but then Spotify came in and made it easier for you to access music so it's the same way we're trying to do so we, we know there's a whole bunch of uh, content out there short film content the one we, we're targeting but these content are all, all over the internet so with creating a platform it's easier for people to access these mm-hmm. films so I guess it gives <coughs> me kind of an idea of the benefits for creators to use a platform rather than YouTube but you mentioned YouTube many times so mm-hmm. in short What's the main point for people to, instead of, of building their own identity on YouTube, upload to your app instead? So, so I didn't get that question. Um, so what, what is, in short, the main benefit for creators to yeah. use the platform and, and your, okay. your app okay, instead yes. of YouTube? Yeah, so, so the main benefit, like I've mentioned before, is, is, is a sense of creation. Mm-hmm. So, and, no, a sense of ease, people easily finding your, your film, yeah. your content. Okay. So with, with YouTube, you, you're competing. As a filmmaker, as a short film narrative filmmaker, you're competing with, God knows, like viral videos, <laughs> wedding videos, makeup <laughs> videos, all this other stuff. Um, whereas um, on our platform, um, it's, it's a platform where people coming to, people coming to the platform is people who want to watch short films. Mm-hmm. It's not people who want to watch all these other videos. Yeah. So the benefit, the main benefit is that all, you're giving your, you're putting your, your product to a, um, a platform where people who are come who on the platform who want to watch those type of videos. Mm-hmm. There's, there's, that's one aspect, and also the other aspect is the sense of, um, it's almost so on our app. Also, we have a. Uh, all the filmmakers have the film on our app, they have their own pro- profile, so it's almost so okay. you can use it as a portfolio. Mm-hmm. So eventually we want to evolve in a way we can start working with uh, studios and producers and stuff so people can go and headhunt um, our talents, you know. That's really nice. And the app is right now available. Yep. Yes, so yes, it's live on both platforms, so Android and, okay. um, and Apple. Well, check it out. Yes. It's time now to play some video games now yes. that we have a good understanding of what you're up to. Yeah. And that's a perfect timing for anyone to ask questions. So if you have any specific question for Janvier, you can ask it anytime. We'll, uh, mm. we'll launch a really nice video game. The game I selected for today is an indie game. Yeah. And um, it is very simple, but can, be, can become really quickly challenging. So I don't know your level of video games, oh. so I never know. <laughs> I've only, I don't know, I've, my, yeah, I, I don't really play that much video games. That's recently. perfect, yeah. then we can, we can play yeah. nice then okay. together, yeah. that, that'll be fine. You kind of have to guide me to this. <laughs> That's perfect, there is actually a tutorial, so I'm going to launch it right now. And uh, please, anyone, um, if you have any, yeah, any question, uh, jump into the chat. It doesn't have to be uh, super serious or um, like... We are going to answer the hard question after the game, so you can also just say hi during the game and we'll be happy to have a quick chat. So let me launch the game. It is called Tote Murray, and I've tried it this week and I found it super cute. If I don't launch the controller, it won't work. So the, uh, the principle is quite simple. We are trying to build some totems. Some? Some totems. Okay, okay yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, so we have... Uh, okay, new games. Maybe we can try the tutorial if it's still available. Um, I think is it is still available. No, I did it, so it doesn't appear fine. Well, we'll just launch a, a short just, game. Yeah, let's. I'm, I'm quite. I'm, I'm a quick learner, so I'm, I reckon I can. Perfect. Okay. Um, so it's it's actually very easy to play, and the challenging part is also uh, because we can we can play nice with each other, but we can also not play nice with each other. Oh, well, I so. Let's be competitive. <laughs> um, 
Okay, that's cute, and we can play for three minute games. So the okay. shorter I think the better in this case. So I'll give you the white controller, this one, because it's slightly easier. So which character do you want? We have. Uh, can I can have the orange? I want to say, can I go with our brand? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Uh, where did they say but? Uh, okay. I think oh, no. my controllers are a bit lost right now. I don't know why. Okay. Let me see. I'm just going to relaunch the game because I think I know what happened. I have this bad habit of um, completely forgetting that my controllers are going um, off you, you when we chat, and then I launch the game and the controller are still. Do you tend to play a lot of games? Yeah, kind of. Um, but. To be honest, the stream is a good excuse for me to play okay, games. Fair enough. I don't. I just don't have the time, like any, like everyone else. But yeah. also, uh, I like to be really into one game. So mm. like a, a like a book. You know, when you're yeah. reading a book, you like to finish it and not being uh, yeah. like yeah. jumping in and out the, yeah. the game. Because I'm trying to remember the last um, video games I properly played. Probably, <laughs> I, I don't know. When I was a teenager, I played a lot of uh, GTA. Do you remember that? Oh yes, yes, yes. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Yeah, it was uh, a lot of missions. And yeah. Then um, I play loads of action video games. Like what kind of action game? Um, do you remember? I mean, no, you probably do. Nintendo 64. Uh, yep. Loads of Mario, Mario <laughs> and cards in Nintendo 64. And um, I'm trying to remember other games. Double uh, Seven, Golden Eye. Oh that's yeah, classic. that's a classic. That's classic. That's, this one is really good. <laughs> okay, so the game works now. I give you this controller. Cool. And let's see if I remember all the controls. So basically, there are some kind of piece of wood. Oh, okay. <laughs> you can jump. Uh, no, you cannot jump. You can uh, kind of dash oh. with B. Yeah. And you can pick things up, and you have to like pile them together to create a. This is really cool. <laughs> And uh, the game lasts for three minutes, so at the end of the three minutes, yeah. it's about having the most um, totems. totems, yes. Um, so you can do totems as high as you want, but also the thing is, I can kick yours. So if oh, I want really? to go in yours and, and like, press B, I can kick your totem. Oh god, I'm on, I'm on six now. Oh wow, you're fast. I told them it's a quick liner. Oh god, it's a bomb. It's a bomb. Oh yeah, you have some things coming out from this guy. Oh, this is this is really nice. <laughs> so that's the thing, if I have this at home, I'll probably just work then come home to play. <laughs> so it's probably it's a good thing I don't have this. Yes. This that's, is really good. I find it super nice. I'm always a... a I'm quite often surprised by um, uh, by indie games who I enjoy them, and also sometimes how simple it is. Yeah, um, yeah this is really nice. It's, it's just really simple. It just you know, it's not. It doesn't happen much. There is a like a, a golden cube. I have no idea what it does. Oh wait, is that all you talk about? <laughs> oh, I think I. I think you won. Yes, and what I did is I, I had this uh, golden cube yeah. and I put it on, on your totem because I didn't know what, what it would do. Yeah, 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 I was like, well, let's try. Maybe it can help or I don't know. And it gave me your totem. Oh. So that, everything it, you did went it, to me. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay, <laughs> I don't know that, why. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, literally, I was only focused on building my totem. But that was the, uh, you know, this game was more to try, right? Yeah, so let's, let's, let's have a real... Let's, yeah. Okay. And let's try to very. Um, I can change the stadium as well. Yes, wow. the colors and, and everything. So I, I really like that. It's simple but super effective. How did you come across this game? You have you? to press A. Okay. okay. And then go at the end on the next. No, I think this up with this guy. Perfect. Yeah, I don't, I don't think the character changes anything. But yeah, to find the game, it's. Um, it's always challenging, to be honest. Um, yeah. Sometimes I try to find games that are related to my guests, to what they're yeah. doing. Sometimes I just try to find something nice to play. Um, also, like, do you just random? Do you go for? Do you randomly search for them, or do you get recommended? I search. 
Yeah, I ask my partner sometimes uh, for some recommendation, especially for all games, like a, a GameCube games. He has a GameCube. Yeah. Oh um, yes. I, I, I emulate them. I so. GameCube as well. And there are lots of like multiplayer games yeah. on GameCube, so that that's a good part. I think this is good. Yeah, it's quite nice, right? It's really it's relaxing. Really simple. <laughs> yeah, it's really it's really simple, but it's also really relaxing. You so. find it relaxing? I kind of do find it. Yeah, I find it quite relaxing. <laughs> oh, you know, it helps you not to think much. Cause... That's also because you don't have the music. Um, people on the stream have the music, we don't, yeah. and it's it's a bit it's a bit stressing music to be honest. Can I just just bring it on to it? Well, I think it was too high, and when it's too high, it just... you have yeah. Oh, then it yes, I can see that. Now. I think we won. There's nothing else. Oh, you can still see the sweet. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, I didn't I know that. Oh. I, know. I, didn't, I didn't know you could do that. You won. Oh, you won just because you realized that you could kick my towers. I didn't know that, but <laughs> there we go. Okay, let's, uh, let's have another one. Now that you know, you can kick my towers. My oh, God, now it's going to be nasty. <laughs> So I'm sure you are a super creative person. Um, yes. What do you do in your free time that is maybe creative or not? Um, maybe not. Maybe. So I've recently picked up um, uh, DJing. Oh really? So I do bit of DJing. Also a lot, a lot of photography. Yeah. So um, I, yeah. So these are my two main things. I love music. Okay. So music and uh, apart from film, because I, mean, I do I love going to cinemas and um, just watching film. Yeah. In general, but in terms of practicing my creativity, um, recently I um, just got into learning how to DJ, and I picked it up almost like less than a month ago. Okay, and so I could, still new. I still new, yeah, and I um, yeah, I've been okay. Just practice. I practice pretty much most weekends. I'll play at home. How do you go to learn something um, something new like DJing? Is there online courses or do you go to some places to learn that? Or uh, well, this I mean I fortunately this time around I've got I've, I've, uh, a friend of mine uh, taught me actually taught okay. me taught me and my girlfriend. Oh, that's really nice. And um, yeah. I think it helps maybe to learn something with a, with your partner. Yeah. Um, so you're not just trying to find time for you to do it, but yes. you can actually yeah. um, book time together. So yeah. it's not like, oh, I'm doing something on my end. And yeah, yeah, I think it's actually... Wait, oh my God, it's a... Oh, yeah. <laughs> you managed to do the bump. For some reason, bumps are going your way, not mine. I don't know why. I, I know, they keep coming to mine. me. <laughs> I didn't, okay, I didn't know you can actually throw stuff as well. I also forget forgot about that. Oh, no, it no, is a no, really nice game. I have to say. Yeah, it is. I don't know how big the studio is, but uh, it's just so simple. So simple. So, so yeah. yeah. I imagine. Can you get this on 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 mobile? Um, I don't know. Um, also, I, don't I think know. it could be tricky on yeah. mobile. You know, just to pick up pieces and um, maybe a bit hard. Yeah. Also, I realized that uh, you can. There is something else you can do. Oh, you won! You can also when you have the. Uh, I just realized this right now. When you have this um, golden cube, if you put it on your tower, yeah. wherever you put it, it double your points. Oh, that's it. Okay. Yeah. Apparently, well, I just noticed that there was some something saying. You can do, yeah. Double things. Um, yeah, let's let's have another one. So I think we're kind of equality I now. Yeah, I think I think we're pro now. I love the costumes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so yeah, I've, I've recently picked up DJing and also yeah. um, I deal of photography as well. Okay. So I've got um, my I've got another Instagram account um, for my create all my pictures and stuff. So oh I really? Did, I, I last year I did a series called. Um, Boys girls. I, well, I named the boys girls. Okay. And I ran around um, every yeah. So I, I did a bit of um, traveling. Not traveling. But every time I went out of London, I'd go around take pictures, portraits of people. Oh, that's nice. And see it, and I set up uh, Instagram page for 
unfortunate that people are not interested. I really struggle with Instagram. Um, isn't isn't it really hard to start from scratch a new channel when you already have your own channel? Uh, uh, no, because I think um, the thing with Instagram, so you have, um, I, I have my own personal one, which only reason I found out my mum actually is stalks me on my personal <laughs> one. So, and then I, then the thing with my personal one, I kind of have a certain aesthetic and okay. also a certain kind of pictures I post in it. But then um, this photography series I wanted to do, it didn't, it didn't fit with the, because I was posting on my personal one, so then I ended up just setting up a, a, a creative one for all my photos. That's really nice. So what was the name? Where can we find uh, it? So I named the Boys Girls. It's called okay, Boys Girls, Boys Girls. Um, in Instagram or Insta. And it's, it's literally it's portraits of people okay. that I find interesting. So yeah, to answer your question, apart from working minutes and film stuff. Yeah. Photography is my second hobby. That's, that's very nice. I always wanted to, to start, but I just, you know, I've read some books, I launched um, um, some courses, I started some courses online, and yeah. I just didn't, didn't have the time. Generally, I finish the courses I start. What courses in photography? Well, I start many courses on different topics, different, but yeah. I wanted on, to do one on photography and just never managed to yeah. get the time. And, to practice or anything um, it all depends I mean if you're doing the one I've done is called is, a, is more street photography okay so um, so really specific yeah so it's very specific street photography but then you can also um, I don't know studio you can do studio photography as well okay yeah um, which is I think that that only requires more training because okay we're dealing with uh, I don't know lights yeah and support other aspects we're dealing with the studio mm -hmm. but it's street photography you can literally use a phone yeah. Okay. So, so the one I, the series I started is I was using my iPhone to begin with, okay. my old iPhone, but then um, then I've got a small DSLR camera that I started using now. That's nice. That's actually that's a piece I need to upgrade for the setup. Like I yeah. don't have a good camera, yeah. and that's my pain point right now. That's I, just a camera. Um, I mean I can recommend some cameras <laughs> for you, but yeah, it all depends. I mean I think your setup is really nice. Thank yeah, you, yeah. yeah. Well, the other thing is I'm using a, a webcam that is yeah. not bad, but um, as people can see, quite often um, it becomes a bit uh, blurry sometimes or mm. there is a focus problem. I can't yeah. keep the focus right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, think, I think you're doing way enough already. This, yeah. Thank you. I'm really, I'm really impressed by the setup. It's very minimalist. Yeah. Everyone is always surprised, like, you know, just a few lights and yeah. no big camera or anything. I think I see someone just did something and I can see... Oh yes, I see it now. Big thank you to Metamurai for your subscribe on, um, on Twitch with your Prime. So as I mentioned before, and that's a super good example, as I mentioned before, uh, we are live on Twitch among other platforms and on Twitch because we are an affiliate. If you are an Amazon Prime um, user, you can have and support one um, one creator per month, and so Metamurai just gave us their own uh, subscribe. So huge thanks for that. That's actually one of the only few ways to monetize the channel at the moment. So huge thanks to you. Uh, okay, so you've, we've been playing for quite a few minutes now, mm -hmm. and I think well, we have kind of the same level, and we can't really focus yeah. when we're chatting, but still we, we you know, it's yeah, not yeah, like one of us is super yeah. good and the other is crap. So yeah. <laughs> I think let's uh, let's leave it this way um, and uh, let's get back to the interview. I have yeah. many questions for you. Yes, yes. But please, everyone, if you have any questions for Janvier, please feel free to jump into the chat anytime and we'll make sure to answer that. So I'm just going to remove the game now. And I, I love all, all the small chat during uh, uh, the video the video game part. Yeah. It's always like, it's not just a way to break the ice, but it's also a great way to get to know you yes, and yes. talk about your hobbies. Yeah. I, I, and feel, I feel a lot more relaxed now. <laughs> yeah? It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's really, it's, it's a good way to break the ice, I'll definitely say. Great, that's good to hear. That's kind of the objective. Perfect, so let's get back to the interview now, yeah, I see the time where I um, subscribe now. For some reason, I didn't see it immediately, so sorry for that. So we talked a bit about minutes and what is minutes, and we started kind of talking about your own journey. And I want to deep dive more into that. Mm. But first thing first, I want to um, 
talk more about the project itself before mm. talking about your journey. I feel that we can talk a lot about I've it. I've got a lot to say. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you do. Yeah. So uh, first, um, what is the walkthrough um, for the user when they, when they download the app? either on the creator or on the end user perspective. I think on the end user, we started touching this a bit, like it's yeah. quite straightforward, mm. but also on the creator perspective, mm. what's, um, what's the process? Um, so at the moment, um, so everything is, is manually uploaded by us. Okay. So, um, but we are working on um, something maybe in the future to have some sort of automated system, but we're kind of holding off to that at the mm -hmm. moment because the reason being, um, we not we've noticed that when it comes to algorithms to, be, to begin with so algorithm tend to work really well for music platform mm -hmm. so spotify is a great example yeah spotify gives you the right playlist and the right um, music and stuff amazing platform but then the problem is um it works good for music but then when it comes to film mm -hmm. it, the algorithm it doesn't translate that well so okay. that's why we find ourselves on netflix people using uh, people just, on Netflix, just browsing, spending a lot of time to browse mm -hmm. to just find, to the, right find content. the right content. So then, um, so then we, because of that, then we kind of hold off in terms of um, uh, have this automating system for filmmakers to upload their own, their own, their own uh, uh, film. Mm -hmm. So then, so the process for filmmakers, you to get your film on an app, um, you so once you download the app, you like the app, you, you like the films we have in there. You then, if you have a film that you want to feature on an app. You say, you have to send it to us. Okay. Then I've got a team of a uh, content uh, um, head. Of, I've got a head of content, Regis, who handles all, all the um, content. He kind of vets the content to see if the quality and, and match the, the okay. films we have. So you, you send it to Regis. Also, you send it to our, our content team. They will vet the film. And if the film does pass the test or pass the quality that we're looking for, mm -hmm. then we will. Um, yeah. Then then we continue the conversation in terms of getting a license and. Then we manually upload ourselves. Okay. Yeah. So, it, what kind of um, uh, filters or criteria are you looking for? Uh, so the funny thing when when we do say we vet the film, people will think, oh god, you know, there's a whole bunch of like sorts yeah. of questions. No. <laughs> so it's it's literally so so when you go on, when you go on our um, platform, I would say probably 95 percent of our film they're all award nominated. Okay. Um, even though the award nominated, but not saying that your film has to be, I don't know, shot in a red camera or is half a million founded. Mm -hmm. No, we're saying the quality. So the, when, when we talk about quality, we're talking about more of the storytelling. Okay. We focus on the storytelling and also um, the, the quality of the equipment. So, for example, is your microphone, can we hear what the, the actors mm. are saying? We have had some films people send to us where they spend a lot of money on the camera, but the sound they just did not care, or or the lights they didn't care. So, so it's more of a technical uh, vet we do first of all. Mm -hmm. Once the technical vet is approved, then we go through uh, the story the storytelling. So, what story are you trying to tell? And also, we tend to focus on films that kind of I don't know it makes you feel something. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you watch something, you Whether, whether it's a comedy, horror, drama, whatever genre it is, but you watch something, you kind of, uh, after at, at the end of it, you think, oh, this film, you know, I laughed, but I really enjoyed it. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so those are the sort of things we tend to uh, look for. Okay. I have um, one big question yeah. that <clears throat> I have to ask, and it's like dropping the big word, but yeah. monetization. Yes, um, yes, We're yes. talking about an app. Yeah. The app is free to download. Yeah, yeah. So how does this work? How do you make money from the app? What's yeah. the monetization system? So at the moment, um, the app, like I said, is free to mm -hmm. use on both platform. But then we do have a, a we do have a strategy, a freemium, strat freemium strategy. Mm -hmm. So what I mean by that is um, we're just using uh, what other platform have uh, used. So we try not to reinvent the wheel because so our current generation are used to paying subscription. So. Yeah. So, um, like I said, it's free at the moment, but in the future, near future, uh, the app you'll be able to, um, so we'll have a, a free account, but also have a premium account. Okay. So and then users will be able to subscribe for a monthly subscription. And then uh, then we're also going to test the, um, the paying. Uh, so you can, you can also buy certain content. Okay. So we'll test all these free things, all mm -hmm. these free platforms, and just free, um, so just free uh, monetization. So you have the adverts. 
the one is free, but there'll be advert playing. Mm -hmm. There'll be a subscription one which users can sign up to for monthly uh, subscription. And there'll also be one where we test out whether users are willing to pay for a spe specific content. Example for that is if we do, um, when, not if, when, when we do a, a partnership with a, an establishing filmmaker, let's say Christopher Nolan or um, Spike Lee, mm -hmm. We do like a one-off film, so that might be um, a premium premium film, which users will be able to buy. Yeah. Okay, so through partnership, having yeah. specific content. Oh, yeah. that's that's really nice, and yeah. I, I like the fact that you're mentioning testing the test, idea yeah. because yeah. it's uh, it's key to know what actually a user wants. Yeah. Um, on the phone the other day, you told me that. Um, until recently, you were focusing a lot on the uh, user acquisition. Yes. Um, have you cracked it up? Uh, have you uh, found a solution to get lots of users on board? Um, but I mean, like you mentioned, it's, uh, it's, it's literally on a test, we're just testing. Mm -hmm. And um, so what, when it comes to user acquisition, our strategy is, so we're going and we're speaking to people who've uh, have used our app, trying to find out their hack. Mm -hmm. On, for example, I could say, the thing with a short film is a very niche thing. So if you're in the film industry, yeah, you, you know where to find short films. You know where to go. You know there's loads of film festivals to go to. There's uh, loads of uh, places like the BFI to go to to watch short films. Or even there's like, a few other websites you can go watch short films. But then uh, if you're an average person, which we were trying to tap into, uh, we're trying to make this app not just an industry thing. We're trying to make sure we're trying to make it into an everyone's product. So if you're an average person, majority of people don't really know where to watch short films or they have their I own... I have no idea where to start. Exactly, thank you. And also, not just that, they also have their own hacking way to watch short films. So mm -hmm. they have to go, they either go through a friend that is a filmmaker and the friends will recommend a film to them, then they go to Vimeo, then they find a film, yeah. and they watch it or, you know, there's different hack way, hacking way to uh, people find a way to watch short films. So then recently we start um, getting, uh, we start speaking to users that aren't from the film industry, mm -hmm. they've used our app, and then we try to figure out how they found the film. And then so we found a few, uh, I think we found two, two good uh, uh, users who given us a, a very direct answers where they had to get to watch the film. Then now we know these two kind of users exist. Mm -hmm. Now we try to um, find them and that's, way, that's one way we're trying to like get our uh, customer acquisitions, you know, face-to-face -face interaction. Yeah. And then, then there's that. And there's also another one, um, I think I mentioned, I don't know if I mentioned this to you on, on the phone, I said uh, we do, we run this film event every month. Yes. Yeah, so this film event uh, is, there's two purposes of it. The first purpose is to, obviously, to showcase the wonderful, amazing talents we have in our app, mm -hmm. show, show them, they uh, screen their film to an audience so people can, so they, they feel appreciated. Then another one is to, um, to get users to come to to come to us, watch film with us. Almost so. The funny thing is, we've got this tagline. We say, uh, you know, the our events we we branded it to minute offline. No? Okay. So it's got. It's, before we used to call it uh, Orange Thursday, but we changed it because Orange Wednesday. We didn't want any legal battle. So then we recently changed the name to Minute Offline as part of our event, uh, monthly event. So the tagline for it is all under one roof, enjoying short films. So, which is great. So we're kind of creating in this uh, community mm -hmm. um, culture aspect of, you know, getting everyone together. We watch short films. So then when the user comes to our, our events, we, we then, you know, speak to them you know, during our events. We kind of find out what they like, you know, what they don't like about the app, what sort of improvement they're on. Yep. And that's one way we find out it's been, it's been really, really, um, it's been really successful in terms of customer acquisition. But even though we know that it's not, we need to go bigger because you, you can only do a certain amount of events in a, in yes. a month. It's yeah. very local, right? You're it's just very lo attracting people on base around London. Yeah, you're based around London. But that's, these are the two um, things we are working on at the moment in terms of customer acquisition. But then in the future, we'd like to um, you know, do more. I think you're also quite humble because I remember you mentioned yeah. events, yeah. but it's not just events with three people. It's like yeah. very quite large event for yeah, yes, for yes. London. You you're bringing a <coughs> hundred something people yes. every time. So yeah, so we we started off um, in um, at, there's a workspace called Boutique Workplace. It's okay. based in um, Curtin Road. I definitely recommend you check these guys out. They've been really amazing, very supportive of us. 
So they, um, so we started off there, um, they've got a co-working space in, in Shoreditch. Mm-hmm. And our first events, there was literally maybe 30, 40 people. And then, which is not bad for a first event. Yeah, which is, yeah, it was really, yeah, I mean, yeah, I think so. Yeah, it was, it was really, it was, yeah, we're really grateful for that. But then I say, as, so, because the first events, I guess, went really well. And then uh, people who came to our events enjoyed it, end up telling their friends. Then what we start seeing afterwards, there was just a spike of people coming to our events. Up to the last events we had in December, it was about 100 and something. Okay. Before, yeah, 100 and something with people. And that event was, um, we did it with Samsung. Oh, at nice. Samsung uh, KX venue. I don't know if you've been to it, it's like a spaceship. It's like huge. I haven't, thing. but I think I have something in my calendar taking place there. So I hope to see the oh, place pretty soon. Please, I highly <laughs> recommend it to, to go and, and check it out. So uh, so we started sort of really small, um, just 30 people, then it went on to, you know, hundreds mm-hmm. and, you know, I think there was one event when I think that we had maybe 200 people. Wow. So, excuse me, that, that was, um, so we did um, this um, Black History Month mm-hmm. film screening. Yeah, February, right? No, so that uh, was in, no. Oh? No, February is no. the American. And oh, in the UK right. is different. The UK is in October. Okay. Yeah. Really bad. No, that's fine, yeah. So, yeah, so we had a, a Black History Month um, in October. And so we had a Black History Month theme screening at Curtin Hotel yes. in Shoreditch. Yes, very nice and, space. Yeah, really nice space. And yeah, there was about 200 people came to the mm-hmm. event. It was really, really good. It was really wholesome events. And you no, know, there was um, we played I think f- six films uh, all related all around the theme of Black History, and it was a nice Q and A panel as well. And mm-hmm. I think at the end of it, people was really like we had a really good feedback from from our, from our people that came to the events. Outside of <coughs> your app and your own community, how do people only hear about this this kind of screening? I've never heard any anything about well, it. Well, it, it, you know the funny thing. So my uh, so my business partner. Uh, says no, so what number is but head of Ken, content regis he says he always tells me he goes, John, yeah, this is like this are the coolest events, like, but nobody, not many people heard about it, nobody, but there's people heard about it, but there's not, not many people heard about it. Mm-hmm. Um, so what we tend to do is we focus on doing most of our promotion on Instagram, okay, uh, because that's what a lot of users come from, and this is the sort of users we want to attract, and then, um. Uh, well, this year our strategy is more of a, you know to move away from just focus on Instagram and also focus on other platform to, to advertise our events because mm-hmm. we first we wanted to um, get users on our Instagram and understand what users are coming from on Instagram who they are. But now we start we're gonna focus on other platforms to promote the events. But then it tends to lead to the word of mouth, okay. and then word of mouth tends to spread really quicker because obviously it's a, it's a great event. And then um, also you can sign up to our mailing on our website and we send you, we, or we invite you to all our events. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll definitely check it out because oh, I'm, not, I'm not in this circle and I, yeah. I don't really hear from yeah. those kind well, of events. I love it. Our next event is on the 4th, 4th of March. 4th of March. I will okay. highly recommend, um, I will highly recommend to come. So it's going to be amazing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah sure. I'll, I'll definitely check it out. Mm. You also mentioned a few times uh, your head of content and yeah. you have... <clears throat> quite a large team on the website. I was surprised how big the team was. Yeah. Is it because you're focusing so much on the community aspect? Or what's the secret for that? Uh, so the reason why it's big like this, because we're focusing on, um, yes, yeah, so we're focusing on the community aspects and we're focusing on just getting the right content for mm-hmm. people. And also the brand that we want to make, uh, the image of, you know, we want to kind of associate ourselves. We're very kind of specific in terms of aesthetic of it. That's why well, if you go on our, on our website, we do have a, um, we do have a content producer, and we do, we also have like an Instagram person, Instagram okay. um, social media inst- uh, manager. So the reason being um, why we have these people is because we, uh, I believe, uh, you know, product is good. You, a, a product itself is great, but people always, you know, you you want to have a so- certain association to your product. Mm-hmm. In order to do that, you need to have the right type of content people can start associate yourself with. So also coming from a creative industry myself, um, I'm very specific in terms of aesthetic. So uh, I remember recently I was speaking to my uh, content producer, I said, well, I, the funny thing, I, 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 always tell, I always tell him something, I said, we're not, gonna, we're not gonna publish anything online on our Instagram unless it looks funk or funky. <laughs> That's the, I always use that word. What I mean by that is it has, it has to look right. So I'm very specific in terms of the details, the design. 
that's what we have a team and because I mean I can do it myself but now I've got mm. whole other stuff to do as well so that's why I've got um, a team of people as well that kind of work with us in the design on the Instagram mm-hmm. stuff and also on, on, on the content as well that's that's really good to be able to have already lots yeah. of people not around the yeah. uh, around the project. Um, so in terms of the company itself, um, yeah. can you briefly tell me more about when you started and what the next big milestones yeah. for you? Do you want like the whole story? <laughs> well, up to you. It depends. Oh God, um, <laughs> it can be short. It can I, just be oh, I started this year and I, I, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll break it down. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm not gonna because if, if I saw the whole story, we will literally be here the whole day because <laughs> uh, it's been a literally just such, such a journey. Um, so that, the idea itself came from, uh, I think maybe four years ago. So I worked in the film industry for uh, for, for a while now. Uh, I think maybe coming to eight, nine years. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm still in my 20s, so I kind of started really young. Um, so that idea comes from, um, so I started making films, I think when I was like 18, 19. Then I had my big break when I was 20, 21. So I made this uh, TV show called Made in Brixton. Okay. And uh, this is a spin-off made in Chelsea. I don't know, I don't know if you've heard of made in Chelsea. Well, um, I think I've heard about it, but I don't have TV or watch TV That's, shows. That, so. no, this is fun. <laughs> this, this is back then when people were watching TV. Okay. This is in two thousand and God, I think two thousand eight. No, two thousand eight, nine, ten. No, two thousand ten. Yeah, this is back then when people actually there was we didn't have that much options apart from to watch TV. So yeah, so um, there was a show called Made in Chelsea. Great show, but then um. Then the problem I had with Made in Chelsea, I thought it didn't really represent everyone. Mm-hmm. And I saw at the time I was kind of hanging around, I was hanging around a lot in South London, in Brixton, in Peckham, all these places. Also um, in Camden, I, I'm, I, I was brought up in Camden. Then I thought Made in Chelsea didn't really rep- represent people I see every day. So then I ended up uh, creating an, a concept, an idea of uh, to create a spin off made, Brix- made in Chelsea called Made in Brixton. Mm-hmm. And then um, then I happened to get loads of friends that kind of helped me. Uh, I came up with the idea, I wrote the whole thing, but a friend helped me to kind of tighten it together. Then from that, then we ended up making a pilot episode, which, and, and the pilot episode went viral on Twitter, then we ended up saying it to a, the rights of it to a TV channel. So then, then so kind of to connect the dots, um, when we made, made in Brixton, because the, the episode itself it was about 15 minutes like each episode, mm-hmm. but then I didn't really feel like there was a platform that this epi- this series exists, that it, it can belong to. But then I tried, I tried to kind of figure out how you, it would work on YouTube, but it, it didn't really work on YouTube because there was always other content on YouTube. Then um, it's only until like two years ago that I realized, God, what was missing? It was a platform like Minute mm-hmm. Shorts. And yeah, so then the idea then, then I, after made after made made in Chelsea, then I started I started working on film and the film in the film industry for like five six years. Then I started realizing this this whole this growth um, uh, trend of short short form content. But then those short form content, they, but they didn't have a home. I was like, well, I was gonna. I mean, I, I was working at Vice at one point. I can I ask, well, can we not create our own Vice ch- platform? Mm-hmm. But then at the time, Vice they had their own strategy uh, to create other you know to put, focus on other stuff. Then um yeah from then then I just thought I'll take the thing on my own and I'll create a platform where these content I really liked this short film form content mm-hmm. I really like I'll create a platform for them so me personally I can go watch them I can mm-hmm. find them really easily then eventually if I can watch them if I can if I can find this platform interesting I'm pretty sure there'll be other people finding it interesting yeah. then then the app itself we launched. Um, so me and my business partner Julian, we worked, we launched the app in two thousand and eighteen. Okay. No, well, we started working in two thousand eighteen. So we did a first version of, of it, which was really, really bad. <laughs> it was <laughs> well, that's cl- the first version. <laughs> it was really clunky. The buttons are all over the place. And then um, we we started working on the first version. The first version was just, it was just super, super slow. Everything was not working right. Then um, we worked on it for uh, for maybe six months, just like a rotate, uh, you know, tweaking loads of stuff. Then uh, we, then we launched the current version, which is an MVP version. Still, mm-hmm. we launched it in April two thousand nineteen, and then um, yeah, so then we launched it last year. Ever since then, we've been just every day, probably like seven days a week, we work on it. Wow. Yeah. Are, are you full time on it? Uh, us, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow, that's uh, that's impressive, mm. and and I really like your your story and and how it started quite some time ago. Yeah. Like, 
from the struggle of not finding the right platform for yeah. that. Something you just said that uh, actually <clears throat> caught my attention was that you mentioned that on the uh, uh, Made in Chelsea, you didn't find you didn't re- find that the uh, uh, the representation was actually what you were seeing in yeah. the city. Um, in in what sense? I, I don't know the show, so yeah. I don't. Know, it may be obvious, but I because I don't yeah. know the show. I, don't I think know. I think it's more like the class, the classes, okay. the, cla- the classes system. You know? so for example, an average Londoner, I don't think they have like a Ferrari uh, or okay. or have a I don't know Bentley. Just okay. you know, an average Londoner, they you know tend to work nine to five, and you know kind of average salary and stuff. And I think. Um, I think what we, it was interest. What I, I was, what I found it more interesting. Well, what I wanted to do with Made in Brixton is, is more of like a t- for an average person can look, can watch, go, can go on TV and mm-hmm. can see a reflection of himself. Say, so, oh, you know, this TV series represent me. Yeah. So um, yeah. So I think Made in Charles, Made in Charles is brilliant. I mean, I did watch it myself. It was great, but I, I think it was what was lacking uh, is kind of to show an average Londoner that you know. Yeah. They also exist in, on TV. Well, definitely, yes. Yeah. That, that's that's a, a great objective. Yeah. Um, also, um, what, in terms of milestones, so now that <clears throat> you're working full-time on it, um, yeah. what's your next big milestone for the coming year ahead? Um, so we focusing on the moment to, uh, for more of like to, to, um, to raise an investment so we can because okay. cause so far it's been all self-funded okay. and that was on purpose as well so we can uh, test a lot of stuff because mm-hmm. um, we want to self we want to self-fund ourselves test when things are breaking we fix ourselves then to the point where we feel like uh, you know yeah now we're ready to um, you know to get investors mm-hmm. in or to get a partner in that can kind of help us grow so excuse me so we yeah so the next phase now is to um to bring a partner and an investor in so we can um le- yeah to apply everything that we've learned onto the onto the uh, product on the, yeah. on the business and then grow mm-hmm. to the next stage yeah um i think you also mentioned um potentially looking at the crowdfunding at some point mm. is it something that you're preparing for or just an idea that uh, you had maybe at we some actually point? are preparing for the uh, okay. crowdfunding uh, with crowdcube yeah okay. and um the reason being we went we went for the crowdfunding pl- uh, path is because um i'm, I'm a core believer that you know products itself is it's not a product in the community with it so the reason why crowdfunding uh, tends to be a really good way to raise investment initially is because you're 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 creating a community as well as raising the yeah. capital. So yeah, so then yeah, so then that's the reason why we're we're, we're going for crowdfunding. Um, I had a, a few guests, and mm. I know lots of entrepreneurs mm. who are looking at uh, at crowdfunding, especially here, quite good. We're talking about equity crowdfunding. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering, how does this work when you come with a um, quite a creative project it's not mm. just creative right it's a product but still there is a creative, creative aspect to yeah. it yeah. is there anything specific you do to prepare for that um i mean the, the fortunate thing about us is uh it, it's, a, it's a film app mm-hmm. so you can watch film so then um then the great thing is always like we do have loads of filmmakers that we know and also like so my girlfriend is such as a filmmaker i've got content our content producer is a filmmaker um, creatively, we um, a lot of things prepared is more about the content, the marketing content we're gonna push out. Mm-hmm. And the authentic, they're all going to be very like amazingly shot content. So it's, yeah, it's gonna be like amazing trade of the of you know the product, trade of the business. Yeah. Okay. I, I completely get that, and also the fact that the app is already <laughs> out there yeah. uh, can let people try it. Yeah. It's not just you you investing in, yeah. in something. something yeah. Not, yeah. So I think that that really helps also yeah. um, having this existing community and this existing product out there. You also mentioned on the website yeah. that uh, yourself as a creator, you have been rejected from lots of festivals. Yes, I have. I, I want to learn more about that. Then I also. try not to. I try not to dive back into, but that's fine. Um, <laughs> uh, sorry about no, no, that. No, 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 no. It's great. It's actually great. It's a great story. Um. So I, yes. The funny thing is. People have met me recently in the last maybe year. They they don't really know I'm actually a filmmaker. So okay. um, so I I made a whole bunch of short films uh, in my early days. Um, there's one specific film called uh, Life, which is can actually found on, on it's also on an app. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's L 
www.i.f.e. Okay. Uh, or if you just go on the app and search my name, you see it. Okay. You see the film. Um, so that film, great film. I, I loved it. I spent spent a lot of time in there. You know, it's a very like my baby. Mm-hmm. And I remember working with a, a friend of mine called Alex. Um, who used to run this company called Lab Collective. So we came up with the idea to um, to make a short film based onto another film we really like. And at the time, there's a filmmaker called Khalil Joseph, who's an amazing filmmaker. I'm an all-time filmmaker, favorite filmmaker of all time. So I kind of like, I, was, I, was, I don't know, I'm not copied, but I kind of like, I was influenced by his style. So I made this film, I enjoyed it. I was like, oh, this is a great film. And then, then I start, you know, the way the, film, the short film system works, you make a short film and then you start touring around to uh, film festivals. And or you send it to film festivals. Mm-hmm. So I, I send my short film to, uh, to a, bunch of, a bunch of short film festivals in London, also abroad. And I I've, and I've did get accepted to maybe one or two of them. Then, and then there was a few of them that I didn't get accepted onto. And they were the reason being because the film was like, I don't know, I don't, didn't fit the theme of the, uh, of the film festival. Or the music was mm-hmm. not right, or uh, the length of it was not was not right and stuff. So then, then yeah. So then being being rejected by this loads of this film festival, which also it has led me to uh, to create minute shorts. I thought, well, I feel my film is great. I'm pretty sure there's loads of filmmakers out there that feel like the film is great, and they should not. They should not just be a one platform where mm. your film can get appreciated, which is film festival. I thought yeah. film festival is great for you to. Uh, for, for films, but then I thought it should also be another way for filmmakers to feel like they've, their content or their art is appreciated, mm-hmm. which which I thought create a, to create a platform where filmmakers, if your film doesn't get accepted in film festival, or regardless, you feel you still think your film is great, where well, the platform will take mm-hmm. it and will, will give it the, the shining light they deserve. I find this fascinating. The fact that that's something that's something I see a lot on mm-hmm. the on the tech scene also. You know, founders who have built something quite interesting, but they, for some reason it doesn't work out, or mm-hmm. they really struggle raising money, or they may not have the exact right audience, or they still need to buy that at some point. But they really want to continue doing yeah. what they're doing, yeah. and that's interesting to see. You have the same thing mm-hmm. on the creative side too. Mm-hmm. How did you find the strength after all those rejections to say? Okay, fuck it. Let's just do my own thing. Yeah, oh, I mean, it, it was. It made, you make it sound very like it was all happy. Now it was. There was. <laughs> well, the, I'm yeah, sure it wasn't. It wasn't. It was literally. I went for like a. I'm. I, I'm pretty sure I went for like depression. Even I was. I remember just like a. I mean, at the time I was pretty young. I was twenty. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe yeah, twenty. No, twenty two, whatever. And then um, I remember just feeling really shit about myself. I felt like how can. I, it is personal. Yeah, it's like yeah. you know, because especially when you spend so much time mm-hmm. on something, which you, you, which when you genuinely believe is a, it's a good thing. So for this is a great product, you know. I mean, a great film I made. Mm-hmm. You know, how can someone say it's not great? So then, um, I think after the rejection, I kind of told myself, you know, you can kind of go two ways. You can kind of just hate yourself or just stop, or you can find a way to go back and say you know f you to the system mm-hmm. so which which I, I think i did i said you know if you don't accept my products i'm gonna go make my own i'm gonna all make i'm gonna make my own festival i'm gonna make my own platform which i'll take my own products mm-hmm. and i'll find a lot of people who feel the same way well, they'll have a product they'll have their film in, in our platform and i think that's what we're doing but one spot what kept me motivated is i don't know um i think well, I think the motivation came from the fact that like, because I, I, I genuinely love short films and I feel there was just not there's not a platform for them I feel like there's so many great stories people telling in a very interesting way and it's you know when you have a feeling just like you can't help it but to think to yes. feel it and that was what it was so like even I, even I got, after I got rejected I was like I got rejected there must be a lot of people rejected but these films are great did someone do something about <laughs> it? Then that was that was that was like that was what kept me going, and mm-hmm. that's what keeps me going till now. So even you probably know, you know, yeah. Anyone that's working startup, there's so many days just things are going horribly wrong. But then 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 there's like that feeling is like I'm not I'm not crazy, but I'm, you yes. feel like I'm not crazy, but I think this is a great idea. The reason this is a great idea because I think. This, 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 and I, that's, those, those are sort of feelings that keeps mm-hmm. me going kind of every day. Yeah. 
I think with the tech industry, it's uh, uh, the difference might be that it, it is accepted that it may not be about your idea, but just mm. your approach to it or yeah. the way you're doing it or your target audience. Mm. So like pivoting is okay, yeah. which you may not have on the creative aspect. Mm. Um, talking about, about the tech side, mm. so your <clears> product <throat> is based on an app. Yeah. Um, do you have a tech co-founder? Because you come from a technical, from a non-technical background. background, exactly. Yeah. yeah, so I come from a film creative background. So my co-founder, Julian, he's from the tech side. Okay. And I've, I've learned so much in the last <laughs> two years in terms of like technology. Well, yeah. You are tech founder now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've, <laughs> I've, le- I've, learned, I've learned a lot. Um, so he deals with all the kind of tech related stuff. Mm-hmm. But there's a few stuff I can, if someone asked me, I can probably answer. But yeah, so he deals with the tech stuff. I deal with the creative and also every other stuff business related. Is there on your journey anything that has been super helpful for you just to go on or <coughs> uh, some people you can um, get some support from or any community, anything that is helpful? I will, there's so many things I would definitely recommend that speaking to people is because I, uh, interestingly, I've never so I I came straight from the creative industry straight into business industry mm-hmm. so I've I've never I, I didn't take a business course, and 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 also the way my mind works is very kind of in a creative way so I kind of have to train my mind to be <laughs> okay you can't think this creative you have to think you have to use a business uh, mind mm-hmm. but then the way I've learned about business is by talking to people, and there's loads of Facebook pages and Google is your library I mean when people come ask me questions how do you how do you do that do that I literally went on Google and searched there mm-hmm. and Google you know for Google you found you found loads of website people recommend stuff and even the funny thing is even the way I found my co-founder is the most bizarre story ever so oh, I need to hear that <laughs> so I'm um, so at the time so when I was making the app and I was just making it up because I'm just creative person oh I can I can do it I don't need anything then I was just making I was making it and um just ideas and stuff, noting mm-hmm. that ideas, goes on, go on a website, building a website, landing page, etc. Then I met a friend of mine called Alex, um, who I met with him one time, and in, in, he, he used to have his own app as well, years ago. Then he, when I met up with me, he told me, John, yeah, like, do you, maybe you should focus on what you're good at, which is creative and also that business stuff. Mm-hmm. But I think what you need, you need is a creative per- is, is a technical person, because I don't think you're technically there. <laughs> then I was like, oh yeah, you're right. This, you know, so then I end up, um, I end up going on uh, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, pull out a post, say, hey, I'm looking for someone tech uh, related. And then I've had loads of a um, tech agency, app agency, yeah. they extortion, they're really expensive. So I had some ridiculous quotes, uh, which I thought, God, this, is not, this business is not <laughs> gonna work with those type of quotes. Then eventually I'll just go on, like, like I said, I was on Google, just like searching for loads of websites like Reddit and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then I end up in this website called Quora. Yeah. You, you heard of Quora? Yes. Yeah, the yeah. Uh, question. The question, yeah. Yes. It's like, yeah. So I went on Quora, I, put up, I literally posted something and I said, I'm looking for someone tech, technical. I've got this amazing idea. And that was it. I posted it. And I think a week, or, a week or two later, I came back and Julian, who's my tech, who's my co founder now, he commented and they said, hey, um, sounds really interesting. Uh, I'm in London. We can go have a coffee. And that was it. I was literally in Quora. So I've never used wow. Quora before that, and yeah. I just like uh, I was I was looking for loads of websites where it's a net social media, social kind of media, uh, website, mm-hmm. and Quora was one of them. I posted it. I post. I made a post there, and Julian commented on it. Then a few days later, we met for a coffee, and then uh, yeah, we met for a coffee. Then the rest is uh, history. It's quite impressive. I've never seen anyone getting something out of Quora. So. I've, uh, literally, <laughs> even till now, when I tell people Quora, they're like, what is Quora? I was like, yeah. I was like oh, I is guess. it still alive? Are people still posting there? I, I, I don't I, even know. I've never posted ever since then. So that was really interesting. So um, what I'm trying to say, basically, is you can pretty much find anything online. So that's yeah. my biggest advice. Use Google. And go to those uh, startup events. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so there used to be this company, I don't know if it still exists, Launch22. Yes, it's still, it's still exi- up, yeah. Okay, cool, amazing. So, um, and uh, like the early days of um, um, the idea of Minute Shorts, I used to go to loads of launch, launch 22. Uh, they used to have loads of startup events mm-hmm. after work. And then um, then recently, I'm a member of um, Tech Hub. Yes. I highly recommend people to use uh, Tech Hub. And if you can sign up to Tech Hub, it, it is literally life-saving. 
and it's probably Elizabeth thinks I'm, I'm giving a shout out to this. <laughs> but it's, it's been a life saving using Tech Carb. Uh, they also have loads of events. Mm-hmm. They've got their own Slack channels, which they also recommend stuff for you. You can find pretty much anything startup related. And I think just like, you know, my advice is like generally just reaching out to people who you find interesting and ask them questions. And, and also what you find loads of people in, in startup, you know, people willing to help people. Yeah. If they see you're actually committed mm-hmm. to your idea, so yeah, that's that's correct. Um, and I think it's funny, but it's something um, everyone kind of mentioned in yeah. their own way. It's just go out there, talk about your idea, and reach yeah. out, reach out to people. Um, do you feel that being in London for the creative space is super important, <clears> or or is it more like uh, being involved in the startup scene that is very much London centric? So I guess, so do you mean? So do you feel that like being in London is key for you, um, or you could do that anywhere else? Oh, um, I think um, my girlfriend probably would disagree with this. Disagree with me on this one, but I do think London. Um, I think being in London is super. Um, it's super important in terms mm-hmm. of being, um, you know, in the creative for the creative industry aspects and also from the startup business aspects as well. The reason I can actually say this is because um, I've been in Paris and the system in Paris is, I mean, yeah, yeah, I probably it's a bit about it, yeah, yeah. you know, you probably know a bit about it. It's not, uh, it's not as great as not, it's not good as in London because I think in London we have the system where kind of everything's connected. So, for example, um. We I tend to work in shortage, and in shortage, there's so many things happening in shortage, you know. Oh, yeah. So you, you can go to loads of events to meet people, and also I just think the ecosystem, the way things are spread mm-hmm. in London, it makes it easier for people to meet, we meet yes. random people, and you can have something really, really interesting in Peckham, something really interesting in Camden, something mm-hmm. really interesting in shortage, all these places. Whereas I think in Paris, it's not like that. So you have just one spot. And if you're not, if you don't really know anyone from that certain area, your chances are really slim. Yes. But we're in London, the kind of um, chances and opportunities kind of spread it, so you'd mm-hmm. be able to get to them. And I, that's why I think London is a really a good capital to be if you want to meet people and also just create your own stuff. Yeah. Is there any uh, specific places? You mentioned lots of uh, tech places. Is yeah. there any specific uh, creative places for people more creative trying to get contact uh, in this space? Creative, creative, creative. The BFI. Okay. It's a good, it's a good shout. And uh, pff, I'm trying to think creative. No. I, don't, okay. I, mean, I mean, I mean, there's Peckham levels. It's a good, it's a good space as well. Peckham level, the BFI. And these are the two main things. I would suggest, but then mm-hmm. growing up, I mean, we've we've been when I used to do more films. It was more through through friends and stuff. Okay. I start, I started I started off with through friends. You yeah. know, I work on a friend's project, which they were recommending to another friend. Next thing you know, you have all this network of people who work in film, and I think also like Facebook. There's loads of Facebook groups mm. for creatives. So. Almost too many, right? And there's almost too many. <laughs> Facebook group for everything. Yeah. Um, so far, what has been the uh, the hardest part on your journey? Um, I think it might be uh, actually building the initial product. Okay. And then also understanding uh, that not everyone gets what I did at the first go. Mm-hmm. So um, I think that's what a lot of people. It's also I also that might be to be, might be because of my creativity. People, when you come from a creative industry, you tend to think you're kind of a bit selfish. You mm-hmm. think your idea is it is it. Yeah. But then um, I think the hardest part is more of like you know, just not knowing that the products you're making is not for you. It's for it's for people. It's for everyone. So you kind of have to understand what the people, what your user want, what your user habits are, mm-hmm. what your user what they hang around, what who they talk to. You know, their profile. I think the hardest part at the beginning was more of like a me. Um, you know, shifting that mindset from the creative to business. Exactly. That was hard. Then once, once I, once I kind of understood the creative aspects of it, I mean the business aspects of thinking. Mm-hmm. Then I started like, um, and then things started to be, start to make sense. I think yeah, the shift was more of the hardest bit for me, and also building an initial product. Yeah. 
I love how you're very transparent about it. That's really what I try to get, and, and yeah. I really love that. That's why I also I love talking to early stage founders, yeah. Yeah. Um, because that's not necessarily mm. the answer you would get from people who have been <laughs> successful for ten oh years. Oh God! You so know the funny, the funny thing is like um, the business world is is strange in a sense of uh, so everyone I met is that like people people know it all, mm-hmm. but then uh, but then the thing is so when it comes a lot of people in a uh, creative industry they tend to be quite transparent and mm-hmm. you know vulnerable and so it's always really weird when I meet people in the, like I would go to like business events and I kind of tell them you know I find this stru- I find this hard then they're like oh you're saying you find something hard <laughs> you know people in the business world is supposed to be like you know oh you know I can do it or I can yeah. take down a mountain it's like no just you know yes you can that's great but then if you can't you say you can't and you, you find, you're trying mm-hmm. to find a way to take down the mountain and I think we've um, yeah I think that's been a thing for me like it's, I find the industry really um, strange but <laughs> yeah I'm getting used to it yeah. I think it's slowly changing but yeah. uh, I agree depending on where you're going yeah. who you're meeting sometimes it can be a bit like no yeah. today but that's not the modern mindset yeah so. yeah yeah <laughs> let's move to 2020, 20, now. exactly yeah <laughs> um so you app is already out there yeah. on Android and iPhone so yeah. both. anyone can just check it out and download the app and watch short films yes I'm um, doing premium a short films premium short films premium yes yeah um, so you are also super active on social media yeah. what are the main places uh, where we can find you online so um, well me personally or the, the business well both, both. Okay, yeah. cool. so we tend to be very active on Instagram so if yes, you search on if, if you go on Instagram you search at minute.shorts mm-hmm. you find us on Instagram like that okay. and also occasionally we do, we do posts on uh, on Twitter so it's Twitter is minutes underscore shorts okay. and we also have a Facebook as well because yeah. we we need to have Facebook just in case our, our parents need to find our <laughs> product. So that's what it is for. Now. That's that is yes. that is it, what it is for. So sometimes my mom will message me and say, "Hey, you know, check on Facebook." There yes. we are. So we're also on Facebook, and yeah, it's also minute shorts on Facebook. But then me personally is, um, I tend to use mainly Instagram okay. and LinkedIn as well. So it's, it's Jean-Vierre Wette on both uh, um, Instagram and Twitter mm-hmm. and LinkedIn as well. And offline, you mentioned that your next event is on oh, yeah. March 4th. Yes, it's March 4th. Yeah. It's, in, it's in Peckham Levels. Peckham, okay. Peckham Levels. And I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll highly recommend it to come. Yeah. So we'll have, um, on the event, we'll have, I think, so we'll have six film, six short films okay. screened. There'll be six filmmakers all come to do a Q&A panel. Mm-hmm. And, and also this year, all, our, all of our events can be themed around a theme, a specific, a specific oh, okay. topic that mm-hmm. we all find interesting or we, we want to raise. And um, so the, the theme of the event will be identity. Okay. And and we'll dive deep into and the the film we're gonna screen on, on, on the nights will be around the theme and the, there'll be Q and A to dive deep into the theme. And also there'll be a live musician as well on the night as well. Oh, that yeah. sounds really lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I definitely need to Oh check hi, that. I highly yes. recommend it. It is it is the coolest <laughs> underground event that's happening in London. I need to do more underground thing. I'm I'm only going to tech events. Yeah. So it's it's good, but yeah. uh, going to some other stuff too yeah. is, is also. Yeah, that's that's one thing I kind of promised myself this year. So in the last two years, I would spent a lot of time going to those uh, mm-hmm. business tech events. But this year, I was like, you know, I'm gonna spread. Yeah. Because what. I mean, you'd be really, you'd be really surprised at what you'll be found in other events. And you also get to meet, meet new faces, also, you're not just seeing the same people. Or yeah, new faces, also just new mindsets, yes. new, you know, ideas can spark anywhere. So, so yeah, so when you kind of spend a lot of time in, in tech or business, you kind of start to think alike, yes. which is something I'm really against. <laughs> I don't really, um, I try to like, you know, try to, try to think slightly bit different. Yes. So in order to do that, you know, it's, it's kind of, we need to kind of get out of our comfort zone. Um, also, is there anything you want to add? Anything that I didn't ask you, you wish I asked you about, or something you you wanted absolutely to mention during uh, our interview, but didn't have the opportunity to do so? Um, I'll probably just, I, I can probably go on to say thank you to everyone that's worked with us. Um, um, there's a list, a long list of people. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll probably start off, you know, Julian, who's our, um, business partner, my business partner. Manfred is a non-executive executive director. Regis, Edwin, uh, Thea, who recently joined us. 
and Rishi, he kind of helped out with the marketing, and Ben, who did our design for the app, he's a UX design. Okay. Also, we've got three developers are based in uh, Romania. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's Amy, George, and Man- uh, Manus, and Marius, sorry. Marius, and also the guys at Tech Hub. There's yes, this, there's this is amazing, amazing support. Amazing support. One of my good mates at the moment, uh, Albert, he runs his own company, Underpinned. Mm-hmm. He's been really supportive. A friend of mine called Alex, there's another friend called Christian. Uh, my girlfriend, Shadnam, she's been really supportive. And my parents also, they've been really um, great. And they come, my, the funny thing, my parents, they come They come in every film event we have. Oh, really? The That's funny, so nice. Literally, the funny thing is, so sometimes I was like, hey, hey, I'll literally I'll text them on the day, mom, so, oh, I've totally forgot her. <laughs> We've got an event tonight. She turn up. I was like, okay, she's here. So my family, my friends, yeah, so I think more than anything, I think I'm just really thankful for the people that mm-hmm. kind of helped me. I helped almost so this is a dream of mine but then i think it became a dream of everyone else as well mm-hmm. who've been around me so, which is i'm really really thankful for that yeah, yeah. i think uh, a lot of people aren't sometimes don't realize who it, important it is to have some kind of support Sports, system yeah. around you mm-hmm. and, and have people it's, it's not necessarily about people just helping on on your starter but yeah. also people who believe in you or just try to be here when when you need it and yeah. just yeah physically just be around be around yeah yeah um, yeah, I think apart from that, um, I would say that, um, you know, I mean, at the moment we still we are still looking to work with, um, so we're kind of focusing to do more partnership this year as well. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so last year we started doing partnership with smaller brands, but this year we're trying to kind of open up to do partnership with bigger brands. Okay. Maybe you see us at the design museums and mm-hmm. places like that. That would be very really nice, yeah. And then, um, yeah, and also be, apart from that, also be still looking for like, interesting filmmakers that has great interesting stories to to join us join us this journey mm-hmm. yeah well thank you very much for joining me thank it has been super fun um i really love diving into your story thank i had you. no doubt it would be super fun and interesting thank but you very much it's always you know you, you can you can find lots of information online yeah but then when you get to meet someone you yeah. always learn a lot of new things and get to know the people better and that's what I love about about this series of interviews so yeah, thank, thank you very, you very much for, for having me, me. Um, I also want to say thank you to Eddie who is on the stream right now and uh, left a message earlier I didn't have the opportunity to uh, to mention it especially as it wasn't a question but just um, Eddie just said that uh, it's always such interesting people joining on the channel so thank you very much for joining Eddie every time or almost every time you're around and I love that and I know how busy you are going to lots of events and hackathons so thanks for always stopping by and uh, and always giving a good shout out to, to my guests and thank you to everyone watching the stream um, it's always a pleasure to be here every two weeks to get some guests to get some um, entrepreneurs highlighted and also um, um, well, in the future, I will try also to have a bit more of uh, operators and I would love to get uh, an investor also at some point. I have a few people in mind, so keep an eye on the, on the channel. Um, the video of today will be available later on on YouTube, so on youtube.com slash Um Should be out there around by the end of the weekend. Um, also, the podcast edition will come, so um, I'm on Anchor. That means that I am basically distributed on most um, podcast platforms. So same, the audio version, the podcast version will be out really soon. And um, a reminder also, if you're watching from Twitch, uh, which I recommend, I think the best way to uh, follow the channel and keep an eye on the, pla- on the different interviews are YouTube and Twitch, uh, because on Twitter and on LinkedIn, uh, you just get a notification, so you don't necessarily keep track of the uh, of the new videos. Um, so on Twitch, we are affiliates. That means that if you want to support the channel, you can do it for free if you are an Amazon Prime user. I know I repeat that a few times, but I think it's a great opportunity to support a creator when you are a, a Prime user, because we have one subscriber, one subscribe for free per month. So I think that every month you can help someone either make a living out of it or just support what they're doing so if you are an amazing prime user check it out um, not necessarily on my channel on, on someone else's channel also but uh, check it out because it's uh, it's a super great program um, i should be back in two weeks with an, uh, another guest um, in the meantime if you want to reach out say hi or just also suggest a guest or whatever you can find me on twitter at amandinflax or at entrepreneurspg 
And I hope to see you in two weeks. Enjoy the weekend and uh, reach out anytime. Thank you, everyone. Okay, bye.